to some Nords, Ulfric's Stormcloak is a hero. From their perspective, he defeated a High King enslaved to the Emperor, and promises to emancipate Skyrim from an ailing, weak, and inefficient empire subservient to the Thalmor. I fight for the men I've held in my arms, dying on foreign soil. I fight for their wives and children whose names I heard whispered in their last breaths. I fight for we few who did come home, only to find our country full of strangers wearing familiar faces. I fight for my people, impoverished to pay the debts of an empire too weak to rule them, yet brands them criminals for wanting to rule themselves. I fight so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight because I must. But in reality, Ulfric Stormcloak is an idiot. From the questionable circumstances surrounding his killing of High King Torag, to his plan to weaken Skyrim by removing the province from the Empire, it's clear that Ulfric isn't the smartest of Jarls. Chronologically, it makes sense to start with the actions that instigated the Skyrim Civil War, namely Ulfric's duel with the then High King, Toreg. Ulfric claims that he challenged the High King to the duel and killed him, because the High King was more supportive of the Empire than of Skyrim, because he didn't oppose the White Gold Concordant. However, the court mage in Solitude, Sibyl Stentor, suggests that all Ulfric had to do was merely ask the High King to declare independence. Torig hated the White Gold Concordant and loved his country. After all, he was elected by the other Jarls of Skyrim, because the position of High King isn't one that's inherited, rather they're chosen at a moot, so that would suggest that he must have at least been a man of some intelligence and a patriot if he had been elected. So from the perspective that Ulfric could have simply asked Torig to rebel against the Empire rather than rushing in and killing him to prove a point, I think it's clear that Ulfric isn't a man inclined to think things through. But even if we assume that killing Torag was the only way for Ulfric to remove an Empire sympathiser, he went about it in a stupid way. Using the voice in a trial by combat was always going to spark controversy. In Skyrim, many Nords find themselves unable to support Ulfric because they feel that he was dishonourable. Using the voice in a traditional Nord trial by combat is almost worse than using magic. It's cheating because Toreg never stood a chance against him. I mean, fair enough if Toreg knew the voice as well, but he didn't. If Ulfric was being smart, he would have defeated him in normal melee combat. That is the traditional way, and it would have caused a lot less controversy, allowing for more people to support Ulfric than otherwise did. There's only one explanation really for these two seemingly stupid actions, that Ulfric Stormcloak was hungry for personal power. By rushing in and killing the High King in such a manner, he both proved his strength, and he was able to kill the High King before he had a chance to explain his political position, making it easier for Ulfric to claim that he was weak and an Empire sympathiser and potentially take his place. There's also another issue with Ulfric's bid to usurp Toreg and become High King. He can't just win a war and then become the ruler of Skyrim, he has to be elected in a moot to be fully legitimate. So even if he does win the Skyrim Civil War questline and becomes the sort of unofficial High King, He's not really, because there was no official moot to elect him. And even if there was, it would hardly be legitimate in itself, because Ulfric had all the pro-Empire Jarls removed and replaced with Jarls loyal to him, so it wouldn't exactly be a fair election. The main reason, though, for Ulfric being an idiot is his stance on the Empire. Ulfric takes umbrage at the fact that Talos worship has been outlawed all across the Empire because of the peace treaty the Empire signed with the Old Merry Dominion in the Great War. His position is that the Empire can no longer protect its citizens because it simply bends to the whims of the Old Merry Dominion. But consider the alternative to the Empire not outlawing Talos worship. The Great War would not have ended, and it's possible the Empire would have lost, and even if they didn't lose, it would have been likely that there simply would have been a stalemate. By signing that treaty, the Empire brought themselves time to 
to recuperate and stave off the Old Mary Dominion's onslaught. So Ulfric's position against the Empire on the basis it's betrayed its citizens isn't a sensible one. Yes, they might have betrayed their citizens' freedom to worship, but they had no other choice if they were to survive. Also, a second Great War is almost inevitable. The Old Mary Dominion call the Great War the First War Against the Empire, which is a clue that they're getting ready for a second one, and simply speaking to a Thalmor Justicia will reveal that they hate mankind. So why on earth Ulfric doesn't simply accept this fact and bide his time as against me? Why rebel against the Empire when you know that a war is looming and that you can simply worship Talos openly again after that? Why rebel and weaken the Empire and its chances of beating the Dominion just so you can worship Talos a few years early? Ulfric Stormcloak, some here in Helgen call you a hero. But a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. Then there's the issue of military strength. The basics are this. If the Old Mary Dominion declared war on the Empire after the Skyrim Civil War, assuming that Ulfric won and Skyrim is now independent, all that's changed is that the Empire is now weaker. Even if Skyrim were to help the Empire and fight alongside it, the overall military strength will still be weaker because there would be less cohesion. Rather than there being one centralised military, there are instead two, or three if you count the Red Guards, and that simply hemorrhages military cohesion. The Empire, for all its weaknesses, is also richer than Skyrim because Cyrodiil is so prosperous. They can arm their soldiers with better equipment. Also, the Empire's commanders are more experienced. Most of them commanded in the Great War, whereas Skyrim's commanders would probably only have experience from the Civil War. So on a basic level, Skyrim stands a better chance of survival fighting within the Empire rather than alongside it, or not fighting with it at all. Besides the issue of the Skyrim Civil War and the potential Second Great War, Ulfric is an idiot due to his apparent racism. And perhaps surprisingly, I'm not talking about his stance so much on the Dark Elves here. Although the Elves reportedly inhabit the slum of the Grey Quarter, there are some accounts that the Elves, rather than being forced to live there, do choose to live there. Ulfric also states that he doesn't listen to their concerns because he doesn't listen to anyone's concerns because of the civil war. He leaves the civil matters to his guards, who may be prejudiced against the Dark Elves. You've seen how we live. Cramped alleys, run-down buildings, few guard patrols. Even the name Grey Quarter is an insult. However, it is undeniable that Ulfric dislikes, or maybe hates, the Argonians because he banned them from living in the city. They are instead forced to live on the docks. There's no real explanation for this other than Ulfric being racist, which complements his general stupidity. Effectively, he's making Windhelm look less appealing to foreign immigrants. He might otherwise prove a boon to the city's economy, and at the same time, he's just pissing off a bunch of residents for no good reason. If Ulfric had a legitimate reason for excluding the Argonians, for instance, if they were actually just a bunch of thieves, then that would be understandable, but blanket banning their people isn't seemingly a smart thing to do. I guess this prejudice isn't unlike how most Jarls ban Khajiit from entering their cities due to the preconceptions that they have about them. So I guess Ulfric isn't that unique there, he just takes it a step further. The next reason why Ulfric is stupid is simple. By the end of the Civil War questline, or at least a few weeks afterwards, he doesn't become High King. This is perhaps more an issue with game design and laziness from the developers than Ulfric's character, but nonetheless, it's strange that a man obsessed with becoming High King doesn't actually become High King when the Civil War ends. He's unofficially the High King, and he does claim that title, but he doesn't have a coronation, or change his attire, or call a moot to facilitate his becoming High King of Skyrim. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to watch any other videos on Elder Scrolls idiots, such as Delphine, Astrid, or Uncarno, then please check out the playlist I made on the playlist tab on my channel. And if you want to see more Elder Scrolls lore generally, then please do feel free to subscribe. Anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.